many businesses are now able to reopen in Massachusetts' third phase, which started this week. But it's not business as normal just yet. How can we help rebuild our community by supporting small business? Megan Rothschild is the president of Chick Media, and she joins us today with some tips. Welcome, Megan. Yeah, thank you for having me. The Massachusetts Retailers Association has said that they estimate about 30% of businesses will be lost due to COVID-19. So it's so important that we're talking about this right now. Um, in phase three, businesses are reopening, but they still face a ton of hurdles. Can you explain what some of these hurdles are? Yeah, so I mean, right now, small businesses are almost in a world that they've never been in before. You know, they have to make accommodations based on state guidelines. They're requiring people to wear masks. Some people are requiring hand washing the minute that their guest walks through the door. There's all sorts of things going on in the back end behind these businesses that we as consumers might not be aware of. And it's putting quite a tremendous strain on, on many of our small business owners here in our local community. Are people able to get any additional funds to help support these extra expenses that are coming along with COVID-19? Yeah, so there, you know, I, from a state perspective, I'm not sure that there's been any statewide uh, initiative, but I do know that there's a lot of organizations here in the local community that are issuing grants to small businesses and nonprofits that really can be used for whatever, whatever they need right now. We know that the PPP loan, um, you know, it came out and it really covered about two months worth of payroll for a lot of businesses, which really hasn't been enough. So, you know, they're talking about doing a second stimulus. They're talking about, um, you know, possibly giving some more aid. But look around for your chambers of commerce, your United Ways, things like that, to see if there's any business grants that are being offered right now that are specific to the pandemic. Mm. And small businesses, in addition to keeping the general public safe, they also have to think about their employees. So we have to be patient with a lot of those changes, don't we? We do. And this is one thing that I think a lot of us struggle with, particularly here in Massachusetts. We live a very fast paced life here in New England. And um, I've definitely seen my fair share of individuals who have, you know, walked into a restaurant or a business and thought it was business as usual. And that's not the case right now. People are they're having to seat us farther away. They're having to sanitize in between if it's a service that you're receiving. There's a, a huge sanitation process that needs to happen in between. So we really have to manage our expectations when we're walking in, knowing that things are going to take a little bit longer. Um, things might be limited. So maybe not all the services or all the menu items that you're used to at your local restaurant are going to be available. And that's because businesses are doing their best to accommodate these rules while still efficiently being able to get their customers in and out at a reasonable time. Yeah, they're doing the best they can. This is the new normal. So everybody's going to give everyone a little bit more leeway, I imagine, correct? <laughs> yeah, everybody take a breath. I always like to say a lack of planning on your part does not, does not constitute an emergency on someone else's part. Mm -hmm. So if you need bread right now because you forgot it, just know you might not be able to just run into the grocery store, grab that bread and get out quickly. So you really have to acknowledge that things are going to take much longer than they usually do. Why is it important for us to be supporting small businesses? Yeah, I mean, you nailed it on the head when you did your introduction to this. You said the word community. So our community is built on small business owners. Business owners. This is the people who, you know, these are our neighbors, the people who live next door. And so we have to be supporting these businesses because it supports employment and financial welfare here in the community. And, and if a community is stronger, everybody is stronger. So it's really important to remember to shop local. One last question for you, Megan. Do you have any creative ideas for people who have compromised immune systems and they're too concerned about their health to venture out and support businesses? Yeah, so they can still be supporting by shopping online, buying gift cards. A lot of nonprofit fundraisers are going virtual, so you can even be attending virtual events. So I always say check online, look at uh, websites for companies, look at their social media, see what they have happening that you can support from afar if you're not able to physically be present. Well, Megan Rothschild from Chick Media, thanks so much for joining me today and get sharing some of these great ideas. Yeah, thank you for having me.